What's going on guys? I am way overdue to give you guys a little bit more DMR content. And today I wanted to take a few minutes and review this D168 that Bridgecom sent over. Uh, I've been carrying it for about a month now on and off and uh, we'll share the good and the bad. So right off the bat, this has been a great travel radio. I've got the whole uh, NCPRN, WNC, and maybe some other repeaters in there. Um, one really great thing is I can put each town in here with each repeater, and because of the large channel capacity, if I go to, say, uh, Charlotte, I can just add the analog channels in on top of the DMR and really make a powerful code plug with this radio. Of course, also, pop on the side here, we've got USB-C to program and charge this radio if, if you're on the go. Um, I know I don't carry the uh, charging base with me. Um, as you guys saw out of the box, we've got two batteries, which is also great if you're carrying it around and just don't have time to charge it, you can switch the battery out all together. There are so many customizable things you can do with this radio. You guys probably already saw the video on the splash screen in the background uh, that I've got in there. You can customize the channel free tones. They're different for analog and DMR, as well as your push to talk tone. And for those uh, Motorola fans out there, you can probably guess what I've got mine set to. Got our little Motorola uh, push to talk tone uh, emulated there. This radio did come with two antennas. I have been using the shorter stock antenna. Uh, I've had no need to put the larger one on. This one has performed fairly well and I've carried it uh, everywhere I've brought the radio. A couple critiques. Um, I have noticed, speaking of the antenna, that uh, every once in a while I'll reach down and I can tighten the antenna like it's slightly loosening. I don't see it coming past just the snug when it's loose. It's just kind of coming unsnug. It has not fallen off. It's not done anything crazy like that. Um, I have had the radio freeze on me, I think, twice. Uh, I'm not sure what caused that, but just a simple on and off has reset it, and it's gone right back to it. That's been very rare, um, but it's something I noticed. And uh, I did take it out and carry it around. Like I said, I don't know that you guys can see it on screen, but I've managed to wear a little bit of an indention into the screen. It's not affected the functionality. There it is. You can kind of see it there in the lower left. Um, it's not cracked. It's, it's just kind of taken the impact and moved on with life. Um, but that prompted me to reach out to Bridgecom and one other dealer just to see if they stock parts for this radio, such as the housing. And so far, no one does that I've reached out to. Again, it's only been those two folks. Um, that's a great opportunity for Bridgecom potentially to stock uh, some of these housings and uh, promote some self-repair uh, for these guys uh, that are purchasing these radios. Now, the other dealer that I reached out to did say that they uh, had 878 housings and other parts, and we're looking at getting the 168 parts uh, soon. And I think the only other thing, just like most of these other radios, um, when you start scanning, it appears to move kind of slow for my taste, um, but it does work pretty well. Um, I usually don't use it on scan just because I think it's moving a little slow compared to what I'm used to with the commercial radios. Um, again, this is a great travel radio, not something I carry every day, but I am carrying quite frequently just for the ease of use and uh, putting things in on the fly. Um, but I'm still using my commercial radios because I do work with public safety and I need a certified radio to talk on those channels and have a little bit of dual use. But again, this is fantastic, especially to have UHF, VHF, and DMR and analog all in one radio and the ease of charging and moving around on the go. I also did some price research between Bridgecom and the other dealer uh, that I mentioned and really it seems like there's uh, a pretty good price point on both websites. I'm not finding it anywhere uh, deeply discounted or anything like that. So head over to Bridgecom if you're interested in this. Um, I do, I think I've got an affiliate code, it might be RF Chaser, but if it's not, that's what we'll make sure it is. Um, if you're interested in picking one of those up, but not a bad radio, uh, especially if you're just getting into DMR. If you're in the Carolinas, I've got this code plug built and I am happy to share it. So that could also help you get online. I know BridgeCom has their own tools as well uh, to help you get up and running and also to help educate you on DMR. So guys, let me know what questions I've missed on the DMR series and I'll make sure to get it added as well. You guys still here? All right, there's two more points that I forgot to mention on the positive side. The audio quality on this, in and out, is fantastic. Um, comparing it to my Motorola's, I was actually very surprised. I also tried to give it a couple range tests, expecting that this would not perform as well as the Motorola's, but it's right in line with it. Um, really uh, impressed me there. So that's a big reason I'm carrying this. I feel like it's a little bit easier to understand some of the folks on DMR with the audio coming out of this radio. And I'm not losing much of anything, if anything at all, uh, with the range that I'm getting out of this with the stock small antenna. So 7-3 guys, let me know what questions you have and 
uh, we'll talk to you soon.